How the fuck are you squirmy fisters doing today? It's the Aussie Metalhead here coming at you with another video today. Sorry again for the quite frequent breaks between my videos of late. I uh, had a bit of a rough couple of weeks. I got quite sick and uh, lost my voice. I wasn't able to talk, which made videos quite difficult. I also had a couple of albums lined up that I was ready to review, but uh, I decided to hold them off for a little while because I do have something a little bit special in mind for these particular albums, so stay tuned for them. So today, um, I was looking through uh, my Spotify, looking through the music that I've been wanting to review lately. Um, what I've actually found is I've actually covered quite a few of the albums that I've really wanted to talk about this year already. Um, as a result of this, I've sort of wanted to talk about something else today, as opposed to talking about the albums that I either am reviewing or will be reviewing. Um, I've decided instead to talk about the albums that I won't be reviewing this year. Uh, these are the albums that either because I just simply don't have an opinion or I can complete not a lack of interest in the artist or band in particular, or maybe any other potential factors. Um, so without any further ado, these are the albums of 2018 that I won't be talking about this year, outside of this video. So the first album that I had every intention of reviewing this year was Firepower by Judas Priest. I uh, listened to the album in the week that it came out, and I had a review in the process of writing, but I ended up scrapping it because I didn't really feel like I had anything insightful or interesting to say regarding this band or the album. I think that this all comes from the fact that I was always much more of an Iron Maiden fan than a Priest fan at heart. Nothing against uh, Priest at all. I mean, their back catalogue is self-explanatory at this stage. They are a legendary part of the story of metal and its evolution, and for that, they will always have my respect. That being said, however, I always have to admit that when it came down to uh, choosing my favourite vocalist, Bruce Dickinson was always my preferred frontman. Although Rob Halford is legendary in his own right, I just always preferred Bruce's range. Uh, musically as well, I mean, Tipton and Downing, I mean, there's not a lot that you can really say to discredit these two guys. They're very much pioneers of that classic dual guitar attack that is so familiar in the thrash metal and melodic metal scenes to this very day. Now, all of this being said, of course, I don't really have anything negative to say about the album. I'm not a priest expert by any means. I haven't listened to a lot of their music. So I don't really feel like I had enough knowledge to really give this album the kind of discussion that it was warranted. I watched several reviews of people who were actual Judas Priest fans and they had much, much better things to say about this album than I did. I think a lot of this comes down from the fact that I just haven't had the experience and I'm not really willing to go through Judas Priest's entire back catalogue to get a better appreciation and understanding for what this album means to Judas Priest and their fans. But from what I understand is that this album is a serious return to form to the classic Judas Priest sound and for that the fans were extremely grateful. This album got a lot of positive reviews from fans and critics alike. I myself, if I had to give it a rating, I mean obviously I'm not reviewing the album, but throwing it out there, um, maybe a solid 7 out of 10. Um, this naturally coming back to the fact that Priest isn't something I've ever gravitated towards. I've never been a huge fan of them. Nothing against the band whatsoever, but I just never invested. So yeah, there we go. Firepower. It was decent, but um, I think I'd rather a new Maiden album. This next one I made a conscious decision to avoid reviewing. Uh, I never even listened to the full album. And before I cop all the iron hate from all of you keyboard warriors out there, I'll make the point that I have heard their earlier material. I have listened to a full album and I just wasn't a fan. I am, of course, talking about Ghost, having released their latest album, Prequel. Prequel? Prequel? I had no fucking idea. Um, I don't particularly enjoy Ghost's kind of brand of melodic, doom-laden hard rock. Uh, if I'm being completely honest, if I really wanted to listen to some uh, heavily melodic, uh, sort of 70s-sounding hard rock, I would much rather listen to some Black Sabbath, to be totally honest. Ghost themselves, uh, I appreciate the stylistic choices that they've made. I like the, how their frontman changes up the persona of Papa Emeritus through every album. I think that's very interesting. Musically, however, Ghost have done very, very little that has grabbed me, to be honest. And perhaps this is because of my double blast beated fucking guttural vocal obsession of the last 10 years. But 
I do appreciate clean vocals when I hear them, and I appreciate a good melodic composition. It doesn't have to be fast or technical to necessarily get my and hold my attention. Ghost, however, uh, have had a fairly sort of slippery track record with me. I listened to their debut album. I cannot remember what that's called, to be totally honest. Um, and I found it relatively entertaining, but there was nothing that grabbed me. I remember listening to it once and being like, okay, that's Ghost. Uh, I do remember hearing a single off a previous album called The Pinnacle and the Pit, uh, which I thought was absolutely fantastic, specifically for that incredibly well-mixed bass that opens out the song. I really, really enjoyed the structure of that riff, and I thought the production was fucking mad tight on that song in particular. If Ghost have any other songs that are as rich and bass-heavy as that one, please let me know in the comments, because if Ghost had more material that sounded like that, I'd probably listen to them a lot more. So, being said, I did listen to the leading single of Prequel. Fuck it, that, that's what I'm fucking calling it now. I'm sticking to it. If I'm wrong, fucking sue me in the comments, cunt. So I listened to Rats when it first debuted, and it really didn't do anything for me. I liked the melodic uh, hook in the chorus. I thought that the uh, the guitar work in the chorus itself and the following solo was entertaining enough. I uh, was not a fan of the vocal melody in the chorus at all, and even the uh, very t sort of floor tom heavy build-ups was just a little too dare I say Bon Jovi-ish for my liking. Um, it wasn't something that I gravitated towards and I sort of decided upon listening to that single and this is something that I really don't like to do because I know as well as many other people that a single is, is not how you judge the release of the full album. But given my track record with Ghost, given that this uh, that the interviews and, and, and whatnot leading up to the release of this album were saying that they were moving in a much more sort of rock friendly direction. I imagine that they were going to have smoothed over a lot of the rougher edges that made me enjoy a track like The Pinnacle and The Pit. So from that I extrapolated that this wasn't an album that I was going to have a lot to talk about outside of It's Not Really My Thing. And unless I feel like I really have something interesting to talk about or to bring to the table, uh, I, don't, I won't touch an album because I don't really see the point in just me sit, telling you all that I don't like an album if I don't have anything really interesting to inform that with. It's not that I think that they do anything overly wrong, it's just not my thing. If I had to give the album a final score, and I can't considering that I haven't fucking listened to it, but based off the single, I'd probably give the track single maybe like a, a 4 out of 10, to be honest. Uh, I, I like the melodic guitar hook and the solo work, but nothing else really does it for me that much. Last album we're talking about today is Black Labyrinth, uh, the latest side project release from Korn frontman and vocalist Jonathan Davis. As a long-time Korn fan going back to my childhood, I was pretty interested to check this one out. Unfortunately, I didn't really get what I was hoping to get. What with the release of 2016's uh, The Serenity of Suffering from Korn, which I thought, although albeit a little bit derivative and kind of lacking any sort of real long-lasting substance, it was a very, very decent return to form for a band that have kind of struggled to evolve and find their path as the years have gone on. Now, the reintroduction of, of uh, rhythm guitarist Head into the mix as well was a really, really good move for them. I feel like it brought a certain level of intensity back that has been sorely missed since the early days of Korn. Now, with all this in mind, this is why I was sort of apprehensive going into Black Labyrinth. Excited, but apprehensive. As I know that Jonathan Davis did take over a lot of the songwriting when Head left the band, and as a result of this, we saw Korn enter a very experimental phase that a lot of people have pretty mixed feelings about. I, for one, uh, just can't go past the classic Head era of Korn. Albums like The Self-Titled and Life is Peachy still being my absolute favourites. Although, our honestly, albums like Follow the Leader and Untouchables and Issues are all also fucking excellent. I would say that this new solo project from Jonathan Davis, to me, it's kind of felt like the B-sides of Korn, which I guess was an issue with everything that I felt like Korn had been releasing up till 2016, was everything they were doing just sort of felt like the B-sides of Korn. I love Jonathan Davis's vocal style. I think his vocal approach is absolutely fantastic. But what I ended up getting on this release was a lot of 
kind of repeated, unchallenging, risk-free songs that follow the same exact format that most corn songs feel, except without the intensity, heavy, treble fucking heavy, bass and interesting guitar harmonics and effects wizardry that we are known from listening in corn. I kind of felt like Black Labyrinth was uh, sort of a, you know, an eh kind of experience. I didn't really have enough to go on to do a full album review for this one, which is why it just sort of seemed to fall under my radar. I did try listening to the album again recently, though, during my sick week, and just didn't really find anything that I felt was worth writing home about. It's a lot of the same ideals repeated over and over again, a few ballads and some kind of piano-heavy stuff. Um, there's nothing atrocious on this album. Jonathan always has a very good vocal delivery, but at this stage in his career, I feel like he's fallen into the cracks that so many angry, damaged artists seem to do, is that once they've moved past a lot of the initial grief that hurt them when they were younger, and they reach a state of success and their lives become something that they never thought they would be, you always notice the sort of the down sloping in their quality of their lyrical content. Not to say that I wish that Jonathan, I hope Jonathan Davis is truly miserable and whatnot, because well, who the fuck wishes that on anybody. But you can definitely tell when someone's starting to see that, well, they've been pigeonholed as the angry suffering guy, so that's what I've got to be. Uh, that doesn't really feel like there's as nearly as much intensity as uh, there used to be, and all these factors just sort of led to a pretty easily digestible kind of meh experience for me. Would I go back and listen to it again? No. Would I recommend it to someone who's sort of on the fringe of metal, and maybe if, if corn's too heavy for them, this might be a cool gateway album to show somebody, oh, if, if you like his voice, then you should check out Corn because it's just a bit heavier and the music's a little bit more interesting. That might be a really good way to go about using this album, not discrediting anybody who's like a hardcore metalhead that enjoyed this album. We all have our little things that we do enjoy that we like to keep to ourselves. Uh, this album didn't really do it for me at all. Um, probably would give it like a 4 out of 10 if I were to actually properly review it. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of wish that I'd gotten something more. It would have been really cool to see Jonathan maybe take some risks and experiment with his vocal styles a little bit more. I feel like he did so much of that in Korn's later years that it would have been cool to see him kind of you know, stretch his uh, his fingers out a little bit more and try something maybe a bit different in the uh, in his solo project. So there you go, guys. Those are three albums that I just won't be reviewing this year, just from all of the factors that I've already mentioned. I hope you enjoyed this video, something a little bit different, a little bit less formal. Um, stay tuned for later on this week or early next week because there will be something very cool coming out around then. Not going to tell you what it is, but stay tuned. I think you'll really enjoy it. Anyway, guys, that's enough from me. Till next time, stay sick.